Okay, thank you, Gert, to be here. So today I'll be talking about computer vision in our everyday life. So, um, what is computer vision? Computer vision is just the, literally the ability of us human giving to give a computer the ability to understand the world outside there, to, un to understand what is happening around. So we're trying to give it a human vision. From the vision, we can understand what is surrounding us. I'm in front of you guys, and uh, you can see me as me, and you can see this board and all those things. So that's a human eye, and a computer camera, it will be the, the eye of the computer to just try to understand what is happening. So when we're talking about computer vision, it falls under the spectrum of the artificial intelligence field. And the artificial intelligence is very broad. And in it, we have natural language, process natural language processing, NLP, machine learning, which is a part of it, and computer vision and all of those. Basically, if you know very well Collider, it falls under here, under NLP. Uh, if you use your Samsung phone to take pictures, you will see that you have some yellow circles or squares wherever your face is. You have your face detected, that's basically computer vision. Then you have robotics and all of those elements of uh, machine learning and uh, computer vision in AI. Okay. So my master's research was about detecting automatically parking spaces around the university where I studied into. So I generated my own data set and I was having some images. As we can all see, this is a car in a parking lot, in a parking space, and that parking space is then occupied. The other one is a parking space that is, that is uh, free. But this is what our eyes can see. But then up there, you, you have a representation of what the computer can see after doing some image processing. And then you have to also see that image processing is very different from computer vision. They are two different entities. Image processing is a part of computer vision. So this part, we're trying to process the image to generate what we call features. So the features are just some elements that will tell you as human or tell the computer what describes well something. So the features of a human being can be eyes, a mouth, a nose, and whatever, and then some edges around it to say, we have a human being. But in this case, we have those I'll call it arrows that points in a direction in a particular age to say that this is a car or this is something because we're just looking at a particular area in the space, those two squares, and we'll be having a lot of them. It will constitute our data. So in computer vision, we have three, let's say two main elements. The first one is object detection. We would want in a in a big field to detect something. Like again, me, I'm here, you're detecting a human. But then a computer should now detect a human as well. We have object detection. You can see that I'm here, but then now you have to say, what is that? You have that projector, you have this laptop, and then you have me as a human. And then most of those detection and classification fall under pattern recognition. So for pattern recognition, we're just trying to make sure that the more information you give to the computer, the more knowledgeable the computer will be about whatever is surrounding it. So what a human looks like, you have to give the description of a human. What a car looks like, you have to give the description of a car. That's how those robots are so good at, at uh, knowing exactly what is what. So um, here is... Have you ever heard about machine learning? Okay, artificial intelligence? Yeah, so in those two, we, need, we always talk about uh, data collection. Collecting the data means that you take images like this. Those are raw images. We see that this is a parking space where there are many cars, we have many spots, we just see them. You, know, you have to feed it to a computer and then the computer needs to take all those pixel values and all those elements in this image from the description I gave the computer of what a parking space is to automatically detect them 
on a new parking, uh, on a new parking area, giving the lines, giving the cars, giving the shadow, giving the, the road and all of those things, you should detect them automatically. So this is one of my own data. The next image is an algorithm I wrote myself about um, now detecting automatically some parking spaces given the description I created myself about those parking spaces. Remember, a computer can only perform very well on a task that it has been well trained on. Here it has been trained on knowing the parking spaces, which means an occupied parking space and a vacant parking space. And in this case, we're making those decisions by putting those squares around it. Yes, it fails at some point, because I haven't been training that for very long, but then it passes at some other points as well. And you can see here, this instance, this is just the detection. We're just trying to see where the parking spaces are. I'm asking the computer from what I've been training you for. Where are the parking spaces? And then it tells me that, okay, from what you taught me, these are the parking spaces. Um, I mean, this is what I can see. So he has been, he detected some parking spaces. Now, I want to know, are they occupied or vacant? This is what I get from my system. So my system could detect them and then classify them later on, each bay, one after another one. So you can see that it did a nice job of telling me that these ones are well busy, but then that one is wrong. It's, we, we, we call it, um, it's basically the false part of the data. You have, been training your, you have been collecting your data, you train your model, you gave some features, and now you put it in production and it fails on that one. That's fine, because it passes the other ones but we need to train it more. We need to add more data to understand what that thing is. Because if you can see, that's a white car, and for the system, it might look like the road as well. So that could be something. So here we're talking about classification of parking spaces. Most of those algorithms, classification, detection, machine learning, and AI, as a, in a bigger image, they rely on most of these. Jay talked about uh, GAN, for whoever was at her talk, Generative Adversarial Networks, but then these are what we call convolutional neural networks. So those are neural networks. Pretty similar to our neuron in the brain, but then they do a better job. You have an image of a bird here, and then as you process that image, you will get some features that will better describe a bird in an image. Even if you have a bird and a human, the bird will be well described compared to the human because we know what a bird looks like from this training. And at the end of the training, we have then the classification to say, okay, we are confident that 90% that this is a bird. Is it very difficult or is it too fast? Is it fine? Okay, this is the whole process of most of the machine learning algorithms you will see. You have data, you have a lot of it. In Collider, for instance, um, it's not vision-based, it's just words-based. Our data is just people's sentences. They want to do something and they expect something. So they collect data accordingly and we try to understand how it works. In my case, I collect just pictures. In some of the cases, for those who are doing the, those who are doing the Microsoft Kinet, the data can be collected in terms of gesture. So this is, this is a raise, I mean, this is a raise hand, this is, those are my both hand left and right. We're trying to understand what is the gesture of that human being, maybe to give it to this robot to understand to tell the robot that this is a human raising some hands. So we're collecting data. After collecting the data, we want to build a model. The model will be the generation of the, the knowledge of that particular machine learning algorithm to say, this is what you should know about this particular task. And then the knowledge comes later on. 
So now, other than my dissertation, we have some application of computer vision. Here, we have two ladies wearing some dresses, and then the system has been trained on just telling what type of dress we have. So we have casual dresses, and then if you have a trouser, it will tell you we have a trouser based on the, 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 the features, the, 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 the classifier, or the machine learning algorithm has been collected, has been given by the programmer. So this is just a simple vision thing. It will help you maybe in those new shops where you go, you have a camera, there are now some shops. You have a camera, you put yourself there, and then it gives you some clothes that can suit you. This is a computer vision thing. That's mostly uh, augmented reality, but then it has also a bit of computer vision algorithm to suit you and uh, maybe see from a database, bring it to you. That's now software engineering. Um, this guy, I mean, someone, this person is just a face. Do you see the new iPhone X or 10, however you want to call it, has that uh, face thing where you just unlock your phone using the, the camera? At the very beginning, even the phones that have a fingerprint on it, you have to put your finger a particular number of time for it to recognize your fingerprints, similar to your face. You're basically training your system to recognize you. So the more you do that, the more the system adjusts some parameters for you, so that the next one that comes will not be entering into your phone. So we have a detection phase that will say, this is a human face. And then we have a classification and recognition phase where you say, this is actually Julian you're looking at. Yeah, and then it has some features, as you can see, it just be looking for a nose, eyes, uh, a chin, mouth, and then this is a human face, and this is someone we know. Okay, here it's a video from BMW Computer Vision Research Lab on how they basically using the uh, uh, light beam to make sure that this, the, the, the next driver doesn't get too much light on his face. If you see, they will just move around based on a camera fitted on the windscreen. I'll just fast forward because we don't need to know that car. <laughs> we, we all know it. Yes, we, we do know it. So um, here, in my dissertation, I was having some squares on static images. And I was having a very cheap graphic card. But these guys at BMW, I believe that they have enough money to buy more expensive graphic cards to run more expensive uh, uh, projects like this one. Detecting some light beams on a vehicle, ongoing, and then be detecting light, uh, uh, light on incoming traffic to say, okay, this is a car coming and this is a car going, and we can detect them and act accordingly. So you can see that we can detect all of that, and the front car is not getting illuminated. If you see the light just stays here at the bottom to make sure that it doesn't go to the driver's uh, mirror there to just hit his face. So it will always, stays the, it'll always stay this way as long as the driver is in front of it. So if someone comes on the incoming traffic, then it will switch off one light of the vehicle, let it go, and then switch that light on again. So, yeah, but then that was uh, quite quick. It's fine. But if you see very well, very quick, before I go further, you see the light is somewhere here, and when everything seems to be cool, the light will take back, and the vehicle will go. You'll be having all the light on the road as you want. I mean, it's been always there. If you look at those new bands, you will see a camera just fitted on the front of the car. It's made up for that. And um, <laughs> computer vision is good to recognize stuff, but here it's a face. Here it looks like a face too, <laughs> to me. So it recognized the face as well. So um, they're not always right. Even in the example I gave you from my own implementation, it wrongly detected a free parking. So it said, a if an occupied parking was vacant, that's wrong. 
I'm leaving the, the, I'm leaving the gate, I'm driving to this spot just to see that the system lied to me. Like here, it will tell me there are two faces in this picture when it's actually one. It can happen. Um, very quickly, I will... Um, okay, very quickly, I'll go into a short demo. So, here, it's, it's a very short code. I don't like writing long code. <laughs> and you can't even see it. Anyway, um, can I make it bigger? I can? Uh, okay, let me try something. Oh, okay. Better. <laughs> I just tried something. This is Python. That's my preferred language. I really like it. But then, it's very simple to my eyes. Okay, machine learning is, is about taking data, training data, and then processing it somewhere like BMW did. Here we have a model. I trained some data here. Oh, sorry, my bad. So this program is about detecting the value of coins put on a table in this fashion. So we have data. Okay, this is what I generated, but this is what I have been given. Images of coins. I guess this is 50 cents. I guess that's one rent, maybe. And, uh, and those coins as well. And a USB, that's not a coin. And a ruler. So we have data. Now, from, this, from these coins, I created some data that would be helpful, helpful to me. And the way I generated those, that is just like, okay, a coin in a picture. Given that the camera remains at the same position, and then the coins just come in, we're just looking for the radius of all those coins. And each coin will be having a different radius. And given that radius, I just assign a value to it. And that's just my data. And uh, it was as simple as that. It's just text files. And I end up having a model that I have. Now the system knows, okay, if I have two centimeters radius, then it should be one rent. I have my testing images, and then I have the features I'm looking for. Those are the radius, the, the radius, radices? Oh, sorry? Re, what? Red eye. Okay, I believe you. And then I have the values of the coins. So, very quick, I selected the image T30, uh, which is this one. I have some coins. 50 cents, and the rest it should be 5 cents, 5 rand there, maybe. And um, now I'm running the program. Let's see how this little machine learning thing will do to this. Please. <laughs> maybe. Okay, it's still coming because you can see down there it's uh, loading TensorFlow. And we have our um, cones here. I believe that it gave me the right results. Can you see that? Okay, I don't know about the other ones. I can't tell myself. But I know that this is 50 cents. And this thing is right. And this is 50 cents as well. And that thing is right, I guess. So it's very, it's as simple as that. Okay, I'm not lying, guys. I, I can take another example, like um, this one. If it was still loading. Okay, unfortunately, you won't load that one. I'll take a very last one, image 25. Let's see what it will give us, uh, if ever it works. If ever it works. So let me save this one and run it like that. Okay, so here we have 50 cents and uh, all of those things. Okay, I'm not sure it's right, but remember those things are not very uh, correct all the time. It will bring us into mistake, but I believe that this thing gave us the right answers. So at the end of the day, this is uh, my closing slide. At the end of the day, Computer vision is just a way of teaching a computer, a phone, or whatever, an embedded system to understand its surrounding given what we have, the knowledge of the word we have, and then we code it, 
and we, we let it go to take some major decisions and stuff to make sure that we can make our life easier into maybe detecting some cones or in the medical world detecting tuberculosis using microscopes with those driving cars to make sure that we don't hit into someone in those new bends if someone is in front of the car it will just break before you so that you don't kill someone the car will do that for you and uh, yeah that's basically what I wanted to tell you about today <laughs>